We're speaking with NASA astronaut and first-time flyer Scott Tingle, calling Space.com live from the International Space Station. So you've been in space for a month now. How do you like it? I absolutely love it. It's uh, the most phenomenal place I've, I've ever visited, I've ever lived, or worked. I love it. What's the most surprising thing about living in space? Well, uh, I guess the most surprising thing is, is, is it, it's not that much different from living on Earth, uh, with the exception of you get to float around everywhere you go. Um, I guess that the thing that uh, I had to work on the most was making sure the food that I wanted to get into my mouth got to my mouth and stays in my mouth and doesn't go everywhere else. So <laughs> a little bit of work there. Sounds like some precision work. So. Uh... If you've gotten your space legs already, are you able to do any interesting flips or maneuvers as you move around the space station? <laughs> what I like, you know, when I'm coming through the lab and uh, get on a good straightaway, I kind of like to tap a little bit of uh, roll into my body, so I pretend I'm doing barrel rolls in my airplanes, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of fun to do that. That's that's my favorite maneuver. But uh, you know, everybody else, I think, you know, you can see them doing backflips and forward flips, and some folks translate sitting down, and some folks, you know, translate lying down, you know, flat and uh, and horizontal. But uh, it's a, it's a really neat place to try to move around in. Are you looking forward to your spacewalk coming up? Absolutely. We just spent the morning uh, preparing. We just did a suit check and made sure everything was working right and, uh, and make sure everything was fitting right. And we're going to spend uh, the rest of the time now for configuring our tools and uh, studying procedures so that when we go outside, we can be really efficient and, uh, and make it happen. But uh, this is going to be a, uh, a lifetime memory for sure. And I'm looking forward to getting out there and, uh, and fixing up the systems that we'll be working on. So you've had the chance to try out those tools on the ground, is that right? Absolutely. Uh, we have an extensive uh, training program at our neutral buoyancy lab, and uh, we get to use all the tools and pretty much have good simulations of all the systems uh, inside the pool, which is uh, with uh, neutral buoyancy. Are there any, is there any wait time built into that spacewalk where you'll be able to take a look at Earth? Uh, they have a little time, and we call it adaptation time, where we go out and we can just kind of get our, make sure we uh, get our bearings right, and uh, we kind of get adjusted and what kind of forces we need to move our body around uh, out in uh, with the suit on. Um, so we will have a little bit of time, and uh, invariably there's uh, five or ten minutes here, you know, in between uh, tasks uh, where we're kind of waiting for things to catch up and uh, waiting to start the next task. So I do expect a little bit of time to just kind of look uh, look down at the earth and look up at the stars and the moon and, and whatever else we can see there. I know it's a little hard to predict in advance, but what do you think is the trickiest thing you guys are going to have to do on this spacewalk? Well, there's a point in the spacewalk where I have to get out of my uh, boot restraint and I have to go over to my partner's uh, boot restraint and I have to move him while he's holding a massive uh, rope uh, uh, piece of equipment from the robotic arm. Uh, so there's a lot of mass there and we have to be very careful about how, what kind of rates we put while we're while we're moving that uh, moving his body around. So I think that will be tricky. I'll probably take that slow and uh, and be very uh, cautious. Thank you so much for talking with us Scott and good luck on your spacewalk. Thank you and uh, thank you so much for your interest. Have a great day.